It's very pretty by night. They did an absolute masterful job with this game. I recently noticed that making games is a little bit like cooking food. And I think as in food, what makes games great is kind of like flavorings, like spices. And uh, kind of knowing what spice to put on what. So so what goes well with, uh, with each other. Because you can, um, in order to make a good make good food, you need to know kind of what makes uh, what you what makes uh, what you're cooking delicious. Like you wouldn't put, uh, let's say, pickles and honey. Um, you would know not to put them together. But it also means when you when you have pickles, you kind of need to know that you're making something with pickles, and that pickles are great on a burger. So if you're making a burger, you definitely want some pickles on there. At least I would want some. Uh, that goes according to taste as well. And that is something that plays into this whole thing also. But if you don't know you're making a burger when you're making a burger, that's sometimes like when, when games don't realize what they are and what makes them great. And I think you could see, you can really see a lack of this understanding in many sequels that have come out lately. For example, Bethesda with Starfield. I, after Starfield, I have to assume that Bethesda didn't know what made Skyrim great. And Skyrim had a lot of uh, bugs, a lot of flaws, but it was also a game that many people uh, loved and still love to this day. And it, uh, they would love it even more if they just left it alone and didn't patch it anymore so our bugs would, uh, our mods would wouldn't keep breaking all the time that's another thing um yes and i and i think you really notice when someone a game studio doesn't know what product they're actually making they think they make you know spaghetti when they're actually making a burger and then they then they create problems you don't want tomato sauce on a burger at least i wouldn't assume that that's great and but you definitely want tomato sauce on spaghetti so but you wouldn't want pickles and spaghetti. So if you're, if you're not aware of the product you're making, it's just not going to be good. And the other thing is, you kind of got to at some point commit to a certain kind of, uh, of flavor, let's say. Uh, you also, in order for your game to be something, it has to not be a lot of other things. And I think that's something that we can see in uh, Baldur's Gate 3. This game knows it's not an, a, fa a fast-paced action game. It's a strategic, uh, great role-playing game, and it plays to its strength tremendously. It doesn't try to add some uh, shooting minigame in there or uh, anything of the sort. And I think that elevates this game to the height it has, and that's why it uh, earns so many uh, prizes. It knows, it knows uh, to capitalize on their voice actor talent. And on their story writing, which is then absolutely amazing because that's uh, what they um, focus their resources around. Yes, and I think uh, the same goes with Monster Hunter. This game is a game about hunting monsters and basically nothing else. And all the game system work to enhance your experience of hunting monsters. So it knows exactly what it is. And it knows exactly what flavors or spices to put in the game. And what, uh, and it also w uh, knows what utensils to give you. It knows that you uh, wouldn't want to eat a burger with a spoon. So it gives you the right utensils to consume it as well. And I think this is why this is such a good and smooth experience to play through. For casual players and uh, advanced players uh, alike. Yes, and I think many of these sequels that have come out now really prove that many developers kind of kind of seems like either the original teams that made the games great left and the new ones don't know what made the original game uh, good or they had kind of a fluke and a, a success kind of by accident and now they are trying to recreate it with the same team and just didn't know uh, what to do. Because you can see they are just, they are trying so hard to just essentially uh, make the same game again 
but have it sell again as a new game. And yeah, that doesn't fly if you don't understand what made the first game good. You didn't know that you was don't know that you have a food and the and the ingredient that made it taste so well is kind of honey and you can't taste that out and you wouldn't know to add honey to it and then just just gets extremely bland. Yes, and and that uh, that's a parallel I would see there. And the the other thing is, what I noticed is many um, many game studios, oops, many game studios also. Um, have a game where they're like okay we don't want to take the risk to commit to any certain uh, play style or any certain kind of game we want to keep it open for everyone so that everyone can play it if they choose to and then they kind of decide it's like if you made if you made a, a piece of food and you didn't put anything on it because you think oh some people might not like it if it's too salty or some people might not like it if there's have any pepper on it, or maybe maybe some people like it if there's uh, wouldn't like it if there's too little pepper on. It. So they they kind of try to balance all these things out and make this food kind of a, or this game kind of accessible to everyone. And I think it's the same with food. There, there's no food good food on the planet that is is enjoyed by everyone. And if you try to make that you're probably gonna create a product that is extremely inferior. And I think we now see that displayed absolutely clearly in those last game releases. And I'm so happy that at the Game Awards, a game like Starfield didn't get a single award when a game like Baldur's Gate was on the same, uh, on the same list. Because that would have been an absolute shame if there would have been any category where Starfield had won over Baldur's Gate. Because in Baldur's Gate you can see that there's a loving game developer that understands his products, that gives it enough time in the oven. And enough time in the oven didn't mean that we couldn't play it. It was an early access for like, I don't know, I think like two years. And yeah, so so you, even as a consumer you couldn't be like, oh, this is taking too long. Because hey, if you wanted to play Baldur's Gate, go right ahead. I mean, the early versions had some... Uh, had some stability issues that was definitely the case but the, if you really wanted to play that game that wasn't something that would have that would have seriously held you back not by a long shot yes yeah, so they have larian has again demonstrated that this is definitely possible to do to still release a great game in the current times with the current prices and the current uh, economical climate and i think many other developers uh, the moment Baldur's Gate 3 released, many other developers just completely lost their excuses on the absolutely bland games they made. Because games are essentially a form of art. And if you think you're making a just a bland consumer product, of course that's also what it is. It just can't be, uh, this can't be ignored. It is also a consumer product. But it is also a piece of art. And if you don't add the art, it just won't work. Yes, and I think many people, many, many uh, uh, game studios nowadays just are really focused on the monetization aspect, which is absolutely understandable because they're companies. Of course, they want to monetize their games. And we can't fault them for monetizing their games uh, in, a, in a good way. I'm, I'm also... That, that, that I wouldn't want that to stop because these uh, they making games is very expensive. Uh, it's just how it is. Um, so so I can understand them them in, uh, increasing their monetization. But if you lose track of the art on the, uh, in the meantime, yeah, then you set yourself up for failure. And I think that really stems from the working processes in modern software development, which are just so formulaic and just choke out any creativity with absolutely minutely pre-planned activities and meetings every day uh, to, to an absolute to, 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 uh, to absolute mind rot essentially and people being involved in a creative process that neither have technical understanding nor creative understanding and they kind of tell you then what you're supposed to make must be a horrendous atmosphere so I can so I uh, have every understanding for the actual game designers and game developers that work on such a game um, that is 100% uh, 
clear why they can't even if they bring the right creativity and drive to the game development then uh, they often can't really use it they can't really inject their creativity into a game because creativity inherently is dangerous and you can't have anything dangerous or risky on a product you can have something dangerous and risky on a piece of art and you can see that in Baldur's Gate I mean the spear scene it was risky but it also made the game interesting and and uh, absolutely likable that they put that in there and they knew they, they, they were taking the risk of course the risk paid off in, in the end in, in PR because it put the uh, put the game out there even more but uh, yeah that I don't think we would have seen anything like that from uh, another big game studio. At least we haven't in quite a while. Or not in uh, intentionally, at least. Yes, and I think if we want as players to have uh, better games in the future, we got to keep an eye on these uh, these processes and how these games are made. And we got to really, really point out when a game studio does it really well. Like, for example, Larian. I think they deserve all the credit they got and all the praise they got they made an absolutely wonderful game which again wasn't absolutely perfect act 3 has some major weaknesses in Baldur's skate it's not like this game is like uh, they, they just put out a, a perfect piece of art that just uh, the game to end all games no Baldur's skate 3 can be improved upon as they demonstrated because they keep adding things they keep improving on it and for in order for you to be able to improve it, there has to be something to be improved. Um, so this argument doesn't fly either. It's a, it's a high quality game, but it's not a not a uh, absolutely unthinkable kind of quality that is never to be repeated, like some other game developers put it. It's definitely not the case. It's because that was one of the arguments I heard that yeah, they had like a, that's a one in a lifetime game, and they had very unique. Uh, sit, uh, very unique situation and uh, possibilities and whatever and they can look back on a long history of blah 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 blah, blah. and it's just that this argument just doesn't fly in my opinion with the resources that AAA developers have uh, under their wings um, that, that's just not an argument that I can accept that you, uh, you're gonna say I mean Larian Studios is a big studio uh, now um it's not directly an indie studio i would say it's kind of a double a size um you can't say that they are that with their limited resources compared to something like bethesda games that bethesda games is just unthinkable how could they ever do such a thing you could too if you wanted to if if you cared if bethesda game cared about making a good piece of art they could start immediately but it's not what their focus is on. We need a definite, definite change in the game industry back to art. You see that in a lot of indie games. And that is why indie games have this giant platform. They essentially fill the void that AAA gaming has left for them. Um, because because if, we are, if we're going to be honest, no indie developer could compete with a giant company like EA Games or something, if they made tremendous art. It just wouldn't fly. It's like, um, I, mean, I mean, look at the music industry. There, there are indie artists and stuff, but they make a, they make art an absolutely minuscule part of the, of the music listening experience for most people. And I think with games, um, it, it has been a long time since since you use up games kind of since you kind of i think music has a little bit more shelf life than games of course you can't listen to the same song over and over again but, but with many games if they do not have high replayability you're kind of done with them at some point not every game is like monster hunter or something that you can play for thousands and thousands of hours yes if if uh triple a developers um went and saturated the market with great art and great products i don't think the indie uh, scene would be as large as it is today because essentially if you can think of a game um, a type there would probably be all if there's already a way better produced 
way uh, larger scale and absolutely endearing and artistic uh, version of that game yeah. from a AAA developer, I don't think you would necessarily have many people going to indies, which with their uh, lower production value, uh, way, way longer production times, so there's often way less content if it's not procedural, and, and a ton of problems, bugs, less support, a smaller community, there are some, some problems that you would then encounter. Um, I'm not I'm not shitting on indie games, by the way. I love indie games because, yeah, well, they're the domain where game art is currently at. Um, and, and it would be there in the future too, but many people just wouldn't be as excited about them as they are now because they're not filling, would then not fill a void. It's left for them. And I would say it is left for them. Um, yeah, and that, that, that's, I think, an oversight by the AAA uh, developers. They shouldn't uh, just focus on bland, uh, mass-produced games. They should... Uh, I think that the problem is that they mass-produce, and you can't really mass-produce art. I think that might actually... That's what might actually what it comes down to. And if you try, you're gonna get what you get now. And this is absolutely uninteresting, unoffensive, bad, boring games yeah and i think AAA developers really dropped the ball on video game art video game as an art form um it's just i i don't really remember the last great triple a release uh apart from Baldur's gate which i would now put in triple a uh in, in a triple a category they had really just blew my mind to an to an uh, in an artistic way um in in a scale sure yeah, there have been some some games that were like grandiose uh, uh odysseys i think one of them actually is cyberpunk 2077 but the the art of the game that it was the 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 product uh, that it could have been suffered from a quick release that was not ready yet and that is in my uh, they 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 had a good game they had a good core they had a good idea i really like the feeling that this game gives you it's a tremendously good game and it could have been from the start and not have been plagued with these many problems as it that it was if they had focused on the artistic side rather than the financial one i think uh, we would now probably even have a better product because the base of the game uh, would have been left in the oven to uh, long enough to get back to my uh, original analogy. This is a prime example of financial success topping uh, the artistic side. And it's not like this can't be understood because it costs a tremendous amount of money to make a game of Cyberpunk 2077. If you dabbled in any game development ever, you know that, that just producing if you, if you walk through the city in Cyberpunk, if you walk through Night City and you just look at one of the walls and you just keep walking along it for a bit and you will find that there's graffiti on them to give it a, a city feel, you know? And making those graffiti cost an astronomical amount of money. Just those and the, not to think about the, uh, the walls that they are painted on, the textures for the walls and the 3d models of the buildings that the textures are projected upon and so forth and so forth and you got an entire city made like that and this is a tremendous amount of investment and sure you if if you were one of the investors and you put millions into a game like this if you were not an investor but if, if you're invested in the game then this would make you kind of squirmish uh, to be like okay uh i'd like to see some return on my money please can we kind of get this going a bit so I, I understand that there was financial pressure and it's something you absolutely cannot remove from any sort of uh, sold art it, it doesn't matter if it's if it's just drawings if it's games if it's music it doesn't really matter you cannot remove that aspect from it but you gotta shift your focus you gotta balance it out a bit and what i'm seeing right now is a tipping of the scales towards uh, profitability and the product side of the games.
and this is going to hurt the game industry in the long run. I think people are building on a foundation, on a beautifully solid, solidly built foundation. It was built by very creative and um, risk-taking people in the past. And they are building a, an absolutely crappy house on top of it. You gotta ask yourself, when are people going to lose interest in the AAA gaming industry? Uh, because that's sooner or later gonna happen. I, I think I already see the beginning of this. Because people aren't as hyped anymore for AAA releases. You could see that in the, uh, the Game Awards. Um, it was ridiculous. It was an advertisement with a reward show attached to it. And people didn't care about many of the games that were announced there. Um, I mean, luckily the new Monster Hunter game was announced there and I liked that very much. But aside from uh, doing a big mistake with some DRM, Capcom has some uh, trust build up in my opinion. They're not a perfect company, they are a company. They are always focused towards success and you got to realize that when talking about companies, they're not your friends. And they want to give you a successful product. That's what they want, that's their focus, successful. Not mind-blowing art or something. That's that's also part of the thing they're doing, but they want to be successful as a company because they have a responsibility towards their investors and shareholders, which is fine. Because these people took uh, tremendous amounts of risk to be shareholders. Um, yeah, so I get that. So I get that as well. Um, but man. We gotta, we gotta turn the ship around at some point. At least steer it in a little bit of another direction. I'm not saying stop the ship. Just be aware of where we're going. And we're going... We're kind of now doing it in a unsustainable kind of way. We're uh, kind of drawing out the trust and money kind of from the future. And at some point, there's going to be none left because people are going to have been burned one time too many... And they're just not going to bother getting the newest games anymore. And that's going to hurt a lot for AAA uh, developers. And this is then going to be the way where they're going to panic. And quickly steer the ship and then ram into five icebergs on the way. Because that's how this is done in, in big companies. They try to then uh, do a really unauthentic turnaround. And do things that they uh, before said were absolutely impossible and unthinkable. What, make a game like Baldur's Gate 3? That's impossible, even though someone else just did it. Yeah, well. That's what we're going to see then, and maybe then. Something's going to stick, and we're going to get a lot uh, better art. And another thing that needs uh, needs saying is, we of course always have companies such as Larian, for example. That's set a good example. And um, there's this many uh, current game makers in the double A. Uh, like in the in the uh, border of indie and triple A, that made good games and and even um, uh, CD Projekt Red. I mean, they had their disaster with Cyberpunk, but before that, they made Witcher Three, which was mind blowing. I think that was kind of the last triple uh, A release with enormous scale, with a triple A scale, but art that was absolutely amazing and just made you uh, not want to stop playing ever. And, and I, th I don't buy the argument that uh, large companies, large productions have to necessarily kill um, art. Because I tell that to the people that painted uh, church ceilings. It was a massively funded project by a very rigid kind of authority and a, a, a giant kind of... <laughs> a, a giant kind of... yeah, not company, of course not, but uh, it's comparable in my opinion. And that produced absolutely great art so i think we can also make this happen now if we could do it uh, if we could do it then we can do it now and there are certainly michelangelos of the gaming industry running out around there just need to hire them pay them properly and give them their creative freedom to be michelangelos you know what's the worst thing to hire michelangelo and then make him do tedious uncreative work that's going to make them even worse than your non-michelangelos because creative people don't really have the choice not to be creative. So if you tie them down, you're just going to make them tremendously unhappy and they're just going to leave at some point, Not probably not only your company, but the entire gaming industry. 